one thing, one thing about Esau, one thing about the white man, he's not giving up his kingdom. You better believe he's going down fighting, kicking, and scratching. All right? Remember, uh, the Edomite told us in D.C., said America going to be destroyed by nuclear fire. He said, not on my watch. Remember that proud ass devil in front of the White House? No, yeah, no, no. man said, not on my watch. Oh, oh general devil. Yeah, little general devil. Oh, man. general devil. Yeah, man, got goddamn MacArthur reincarnated. <laughs> general MacArthur. Uh, uh, general MacArthur resurrected. The man said, not on my watch. All right? That, like, 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 as if to say, yeah, right, nigga. In your dreams, nigger. Yeah, man, but hey, you got you got to deal with the most high price of the kingdom. Yeah. Say, listen, America gonna be destroyed by nuclear fire. Not on my watch. All right? <laughs> no, your watch on your damn arm gonna be burnt up. All right? Read, brother. Here's the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 30, verse 1. Tell us how we're going to be up. Like that, uh, like that crazy Edomite that set himself on fire in front of the White House. Yeah, 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 yeah. He set himself on fire in front of the White House. Uh, what the hell was that for? They came to the it, it, was, it was on his watch. It was on his watch. Right. Right. It was on his watch. All right. So yeah, man. You know, most time bringing judgment, man, is a, uh, always a blessing to come out here and do this work and, uh, and labor in the vineyard, man. We wish we could do this thing seven days a week, but, you know, the, the, the curses and the, the uh, hang-ups of this kingdom, you know, it gets you, gets you jacked up sometimes. Go ahead. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 30 and verse 1. Come on. Yeah. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man! Prophesy and say, Thus said the Lord God, How are ye woe worth the day? For the day is near. Is that the, what I call? No. Or you just got the piece Yeah, it said, How for the day? For the day is near. God. The day of what? The day of, of Babylon's destruction. God. Like the Most High said, It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. All right, who you going to call in that day? Your, your pastor? Your preacher, your your local uh, your local congressman, your your local councilwoman, what the hell are they going to do? All right, there's no power against the Most High, so you better gear up, Israel. This ain't a joke, man. You think brother's been coming out here for years for nothing? No, this stuff we've been preaching is coming to pass because it's not really us. The Lord been saying it for the foundation of the world. He's been saying it and been there. Noah, Noah spoke about the last days. Enoch spoke about the last days. Moses spoke about the last days. Yeah, how was Shai spoke about the last days? Right. All the men, they spoke about the time we living in now. Right. right? Even though they were back then, they foresaw. Remember Ezra, uh, uh, Ezra, Ezra revealed the mystery. When you read 2nd Ezra, the 14th chapter, Ezra said that the Lord showed Moses the beginning mystery and ending of times. All right, when you read Jude, Jude tell you that the Most High showed Enoch the coming of Yahushua. That was all the way back during the time of the forefathers in, in Genesis, the patriarch. He showed him the return of Yahushua. And he showed Enoch that many people were not gonna be hearkening to Yahushua and they was gonna die. Matter of fact, let's get that. Give me uh, Jude uh, 14. Jude 14. Shalom, Mark, we in camp. All right, well, give me uh, Jude 14. Jude the 14th verse. Ah, right, yes, brother. Shalom. All right, Shalom. Come back out here and get the word. All right, Shalom. All right, that brother been diligently here. Listen. All right, Jude 14, right before Revelation. All right, be quick on them swords. Uh, no, they, I think they got it. Jude, uh, there's only one chapter, 14th verse. Three. Jude 14. Come on. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. See that? Now you see what Jude did? Jude let you know that this was the Enoch going back to the forefathers. Yeah. He said the seventh generation from Adam. All right, so he let you know this was because they have other men named Enoch. All right? They have other men named Enoch, but he let you know this was the Enoch 
that was taken up by the Most High in the beginning. The seven from Adam. Come on. Prophesize of these. Say, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Now, what, what did you mean when he said, when, he, when Enoch said, The Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints? Meaning what? You link that up with Revelations 9 and Psalms, where the Most High told you there's millions and ten thousands of angels. All right, when he said ten thousands of his saints, what? That Yahweh Shah was going to come with that multitude of angels. All right, go ahead. Well, that actually to execute judgment upon all. What is Christ and the angels coming for? To execute judgment, judgment upon all. all. Right. When you read Revelation 9, it said that army was 200,000, 200 million. All right. When you read Psalms, uh, it said the chariots of the Most High are thousands, even thousands of angels. God. All right. I remember uh, years ago, I did, a, I did a lesson on that. The army, the army of Yahweh shot. And you, you'd be surprised how many scriptures go into that massive army that Yahweh shot is coming back. That's a whole lesson within itself. All right, come on. And to convince all that are ungodly among them. To convince. Now, this is Enoch saying this. Enoch is saying Christ is going to come back at the end of days to convince all that are ungodly amongst them. Go ahead. Of all their ungodly deeds. When Christ come back, he's gonna say, Look, you was wicked, you was wicked, you was wicked, you was evil as hell. Hey man, you better be in fear. Because Christ even said he's gonna come to some people and say, I never knew you. Yeah, that, that's a fearful thing. You say, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do many wondrous works? Yo, I never knew you, man. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Uh -huh. right, you you cast into everlasting fire. That's a scary thing, man. That's a scary thing, man. Damn, I did all that and I still get the lake of fire. Yo, that ain't no joke, man. You know what I'm saying? That ain't no joke. So you better, you better, you better be tiptoeing into this kingdom. A lot of times, man, we be walking around proud and you know, I catch myself sometimes. I said, most high, if it's your will that I make it. Yeah, you know, because when we get there, no, hold up, hold up. Lord, I hope we get there. You know what I'm saying? God. Straight up. You, you better, you got to humble it down, man. Hopefully. Right, that, you know what it is? That, that humility keeps you safe. Yep. That's, that's what humility does. Humility keeps you in a safe zone. That pride, it puts you in a danger zone. I'm telling you, man, uh, always remember that, brothers, sisters. That humility keeps you in that safe zone. That pride, it puts you in that danger zone. All right, man. Speaking of pride, speaking of pride, right? Weak. It's bad, man. And it's bad. all their so hard speech. I seen that all day, man. All day. I was in uh, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and the Bronx. That was all day with Jake, man. Jake just a damn summer damn demon. You know those right? were the, the those were dudes. Yeah, all of them. A summer sodomite. All right, yeah, God. trannies, man. God. Everywhere the hell you turn. My God. And all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, see, that's deep, man. Enoch said he saw Yahweh Shai come and bring the judgment against not only all the sinners, but all the people that spoke evil against the truth. See, that check that out. All their hard speeches that they said. Like, like, uh, um, like Ezekiel said, the Most High said Ezekiel, they make their face hard against your face and your forehead against their forehead. Enoch said, when Christ come back, he gonna remember all the people like that. That's that Bible is deep, man. Yep. Right, God, read that again. Like, in the top part? Yeah, fourteen. Read that again. I was deep. Two, fourteen. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam. So all the way going back to the the early, the beginning time. They were seeing the visions of the second coming of, of the Mashiach. Right, come on. Prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. So uh, Enoch said, Christ is going to come at the end of days with the with uh, many other angels. Come on. To execute judgment upon all. To execute judgment upon all. Meaning what? Everybody going to be judged. That's why Ecclesiastes... 
12 tells you, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. God. Right? Because the Lord will bring every word into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be <clears throat> evil. That's why Enoch said he's coming to judge all. Right? Come on. And to convince all that are ungodly amongst and them. And to convince all the ungodly amongst them. Go ahead. Of all their ungodly deeds. Of all their ungodly deeds. Come on. Which they have ungodly committed. Which they have ungodly committed. Go ahead. And all of their hard speeches. See that? To the most, the Yahweh said, you was already wicked. Then you gonna boast against my word and my servants? And their hard speeches. Come on. Which ungodly sinners? Which ungodly sinners? Come on, have spoken have against, spoken against him. Yeah. Check my that out, Shema Mashiach Yahushua. See that? And Enoch prophesied that. Yeah. He said, Yahweh Shah coming back. He gonna remember every wicked thing you did and every evil thing you said. <laughs> right? By Shema Mashiach Yahushua. See that? So that that's why that why when you uh. That's why brothers be tripping off the book of Enoch because Jude actually quoted this for the book of Enoch. But you know, book of Enoch, you gotta be careful. You gotta separate the meat from the bones. All right, because there's some, there's truth in the book of Enoch. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, if it don't filter through scripture, then you know, that, that filters through scripture because what? Other prophets from the beginning spoke about the return of the Messiah. Yeah. All right, go ahead. These are murmurers. That's it on that. All right, so, so he let you know Enoch saw that. So are you saying, read the book of Enoch? <laughs> read it, but don't get caught up in it. All right. There's some okay. truth to it, but, you know, don't get caught up in it. Don't start worshiping the crescent moon. Gosh. Saying the crescent moon is the new moon. You know what I'm saying? Right, go ahead. <laughs> this is the book of Proverbs. Go ahead. Chapter 15 and verse 12. Come on. And scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. Boy, you cannot read it and just stick with the scriptures. <laughs> Good. Good. That, that's only for those. A wise man can read any damn thing and be like God. You know what I'm saying? But everybody, see, Israel will read the, what, what happened, for example. A lot of doctrine that's being taught in Israel now is the book of Enoch. It's not scripture. Right. Uh, see, that's where you go. A wise man can read anything. You can, you can read anything and the spirit, if a, a man with a strong spirit, you can read anything, see right through it. Yeah, whether, yeah. whether it got some truth to it, some falsehood, whatever. You can read it and be like, ah. But see, people, some people read it, then they start going to hell off and they get sucked up. You gotta be white, you gotta know how to discern. You understand? I can read something and I can pick up something and half an hour like, ah, okay. You know, what the hell is this? Or I might say, okay, this got some truth to it, but it got some meat, but it also got bones. Salakia, and my best advice for beginners in the truth, go pick up the book of Enoch if you can't break down Leviticus chapter 23. Right, right. good. You know what I'm good. saying? If you can't break down Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. Good. If you can't break down the simplest things in the truth, right. go over pick up the book of Enoch. That's too much meat for you. Good. You're going to choke on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can stick to the milk. Choke, uh, choke people, or throw people, up. People, yeah, choke or throw up. People yeah. can't, they can't break down the, the damn feast of first fruits. But they, they, they sending you a message why you guys don't go into Enoch. But you worried about Enoch and your ass can't break down Leviticus 23 verses 9 to 22. Ex explain the first fruits. You telling us uh, 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 why you don't go into the book of Enoch. Because you don't even know the Bible yet. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, only, only men of wisdom can read these. Uh, you can read these other books back. When you solid, you can read these books backwards and forward, and you're going, you're going to see what's with them, and you're going to see what's not. You know what I'm saying? But when you young, like the brother said, when you, our advice to you is learn the scriptures first. Uh, learn the scriptures uh, first and foremost. And guess what? You may not even feel the necessity to go into the book of Enoch. But if you if you season and you got wisdom, you can read right through the book of Enoch or any book and see right through it. But that takes time and wisdom where you don't get sucked into doctrines. Where now the book of Enoch takes over the scriptures because that's what's happening with a lot of Israel. They start, they start going in these books and that takes precedence over scripture. And that's a no-no. So when you're seasoned, you can go into anything and dissect it. You can break, ba 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 ba. You know what I'm saying? And it don't do nothing to you. It don't suck your spirit in. 
but you knew you don't you don't even know how to break down the damn Sabbath and you telling me, oh, I just read the first five chapters of Enoch last night. See that? Because then you, you want to go into fallen angels and you want to go into all these doctrines. That's why I say a lot of these books, they did have some truth to them, but Esau tampered with them. And you know what Esau did? Esau tried to make them more appealing than the scriptures. God. That's what he do. He, he makes these books more appealing than the scriptures. So in your, or your doctrine lust, and your doctrine lust, you start taking these books over the Bible. The scriptures is enough, man. You got you got Genesis to Malachi, you got the Apocrypha, you got Matthew to Revelation. Yeah, that's enough, man. That's more than enough. But you worried about everything else, man. Don't come talk about no other book or don't try to go into no other book until you got the Bible on lock. Then like I said, a season, man, we pick a book up, look at it. Yeah. Well, we might take some uh, some truth from it, some bits and pieces. Like, oh, okay, you can link that up. You can link that up, and then you'd be like, God, oh, the rest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you gotta you gotta be seasoned to understand that. Though. Don't don't come talk about no other books, and you ain't got the scriptures under your belt. Well, I, I just got the Gospel of Judas on PDF. Good. Okay, <laughs> I ain't tap into it just yet, Good. but. <laughs> yeah, I went into some of those Gnostic Gospels and it, it just it, back to the scriptures, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah man. You got you got the, the third and fourth uh Ezra's, third and fourth Maccabees, where they going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're going to hell. You say that's an actual hell. I I stay you got the uh the annotated apocrypha. Alright, but I, I stay away from a lot of that stuff because it, it goes into other realms, man. This is enough. Alright, go ahead. No, that's it on that. Give me uh, second of the 14 and 1. That'll be my last one. Uh, unless y'all got any questions or comments. Uh, second of the 14 and 1. said, I sent and left my people out of Egypt by Moses and brought them up to Sinai. Go ahead. When I held him by me a long season. A long season, 40 days and 40 nights. Go ahead. And told them many wondrous things. And the most I told Moses many wondrous things through Yahweh Shah. All right, because Yahweh Shah was following us that whole time. Uh, All right, and dealing with Moses. All right, go ahead. And show him the secrets of the times. And did what? Show him the secrets of the times. Okay. See that spirit is everything. Eve got rainbow hair. <laughs> right? Read on it. And the end. And what? And the end. And he showed him the secrets of the times and the end. Alright, so even back then, from Enoch, from Moses, from these great men, they were seeing the end time. They were seeing the end time. That's why Enoch said, Yeah, how is going to return? That's why Paul said in Hebrews that uh, that when, when, when Moses denounced Egypt, he said that he esteemed the riches of Christ greater than the riches of Egypt. So what? When 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 um you gotta look into that. When Moses when Moses denounced Egypt, Moses wasn't just you know denouncing Egypt because the most I showed him he was Israel only. The most I was giving Moses visions and showing him different stuff and saying, listen. The reward of Christ is greater than Egypt. So Moses was seeing all that. 
He wasn't just seeing that he was an Israelite. The Most High was showing him different stuff and saying, the hell with this damn Egypt. I'm Israel. In the end, I'm going to reign with Yahweh. That's why the transfiguration he had Moses, Elias, and Christ. Christ said, if you can you believe, if you can't believe Moses, you can't believe me. So Moses saw all that too. He didn't, he didn't just he didn't just wake up to being an Israelite. The most high was showing him all kinds of visions and stuff. And saying, This is not your people. You're gonna rule. If you denounce Egypt now, you're gonna rule with Christ in the end. Alright, go ahead. And commanded him, saying, These words shalt thou declare. So he told Moses, These words shalt thou declare. Come on. And these shalt thou hide. He said, Look, certain things keep between me and you. The most I got the right to do that. Right. <clears throat> All right. Who are you to tell him he can? He, he can deal with his servants however he wants. No. He said, listen, Moses, these words you're going to declare, you're going to bring this stuff out, and then certain things you're going to hide. All right. You're going to keep between me and you. But you're going, you're, going to, you're going to reveal to the people what needs to be revealed. All right. So, you know, the, the word is there, man. He said he showed Moses the secret of the times and the end. So he showed Moses what? The beginning, what they had something called the Middle Ages, and then he showed them the end of time. So they were seeing that back then, man. You know how much faith they had to have to see that? Look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk said in the day of judgment, I hope I might rest. These, they were seeing these last days. They were seeing that, uh, like uh, Daniel said, they were seeing that day of trouble that man has never witnessed. They were seeing that back then. So they had to have impeccable faith. Look at Noah, man. Noah had to have impeccable faith. Because the most I said, look, man, I'm, I'm about to flood this damn earth out. Drown all these wicked damn people, man. Go and tell them repent. They're not going to repent, but go and tell them anyway. And when they don't, I'm going to flood the hell out of them, man. And now Christ is coming to flood them with fire. <laughs> Nuclear fire. All right, they're going to be flooded. They're going to be drowned in fire like they was drowned in water. That's right. All right, bring it out, Simeon. Uh, Salaki, um, so while the most high is referencing this to Esrus, is he showing him the same things? Yeah, good, good. See that? So like uh, the most high told Ezra, uh, I showed you more than your brother Daniel. God. You know what I'm saying? Because Daniel got certain visions, but then the most high took Ezra on a whole other level. That's why Ezra kept fasting. Because the most high was telling him, they said, Fast yet seven more days, I'm gonna show you more. Gabriel, Gabriel was telling him, keep fasting more and more. I'm gonna show you more and more deeper visions. All right, go ahead. Who? Uh, Ezra's and Daniel's? No, Daniel's Jude, I believe Ezra's Levi. Yeah, Ezra's All right, Levi. yeah. All right, go ahead. Daniel's Jude, Ezra's Levi. All right, go ahead. So Levi got the deeper understanding then. <laughs> For that time. <laughs> All right, go ahead. That thou no lay up. one has gets deep understanding in Yahweh's shine. Good. Oh God. Good. That thou lay up in thy heart, thy heart, the signs that I have showed. What Lord say? That thou lay up in thy heart the signs that I have showed. That lay up in thy heart the signs that I have showed thee. Come on. And the dreams that thou hast seen, right? And God. the interpretations which thou hast heard. See that? So the Lord told him, lay it up in your heart, meaning store it in your mind. Because sometimes that's how the Most I dealt with his prophets. He said. Some things revealed to the people, some things keep between me and you. Because I want you to understand certain secrets. All right, that's what, like Christ told the disciples, unto you is given the mysteries of the kingdom of the Most High, but to them is not given. Yeah. You're going to understand certain deep, in-depth things that, you know, the regular people, that you can teach them the basics, but they're not going to get that understanding that I gave to you. All right, so that's what sets apart the 144,000 because you're going, you're going to know the mysteries of the scriptures. So certain more in-depth mysteries than, you know, common Israel or what Israel can comprehend. All right, so this Bible is for us, man. Right, right. So let's repent and keep these commandments. Right. We're living in the end. America's going to fall. Nuclear destruction is coming. Thus right. saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible. That's right. So any questions or comments? La'a. Any questions, comments? All right, so what do we have to do? What does all this mean? Mark 115. All right, say Mark 115. What does all this mean? For Israel. We're living
living in the last days, the end time. What does all this mean? Say Mark 115. Hey. Mark 115. It's saying the time is fulfilled. The man is. You know what Esau came to the wall and some wrong with you. The time is fulfilled. Remember, it tell you in Luke that the time of the Gentiles may be fulfilled. All right, come on. And the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of the Most High, by Shiva Mashiach Yahushai, is at hand. Good. Repent ye and believe the gospel. What did the Lord say? Repent ye. Repent ye. Repent ye. And believe the gospel. Come back to the gospel. That's it, man. Because a miracle is what a bird may be born. All right? Without the damn discord first. All right? Burn, baby, burn, burn this mother down. <laughs> right? Trump, I hope his eyes turn red as the damn light, man. Uh, so we can get the hell out of here, man. Uh, man might lose his mind and just say, just blow I reckon off uh, the map. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man, let's turn this thing up, man. You know why? So Israel can stop worrying about this damn folly, man. That's, I'm, I'm sick of that, man. I'm disgusted with that, man. Israel is worried about stupidity, man. You you damn stressing over nonsense. You got an attitude over pure stupidity. Stuff that ain't going really, that ain't really that serious. Most how about to turn this thing up, man. You worried about trivial things. You know why? Because you want to keep America. That's what you're really stressed about. You stressed about this damn kingdom continuing on. You niggas love this place, man. Stressing over dumb stuff. When the most I got all hell about the break, man. You better gird up your loins, like the scripture said. So it said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So with that, death and destruction to Esau and the other nations, power, peace, safety, and the kingdom of heaven to the 12 tribes of Israel forever and ever. New York, I love y'all. Most I will not be back in the middle of the summer, Lord willing. Or maybe I'll take a chariot back next week. But whatever the will of the Most High is. Yeah. Proverbs 20 and 24. Man's laws of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Yeah. H.O.I. to the chariots fly. H.O.I. New York. I love y'all. See y'all soon. Come here, Shala. We still got Shala. next. Hallelujah. All praise to see how about Shem Mashiach Yahushua forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. 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 Shalom Israel, it's Kazawan, and the name of this video is The Book of Enoch is Phony. I'm doing this video because people keep asking me if the Book of Enoch is of the Most High or not. So we're going to see in this video. Now I know a lot of people are not going to like this video because a lot of Israelites love the book of Enoch. But if you love the truth, then we got to humble down to the truth when we hear it. So here's the first thing. People always say the Bible talks about the book of Enoch. No, it doesn't. The Bible never says anything about a book of Enoch. The only thing the Bible says is that the man Enoch prophesied. It doesn't say anywhere that he wrote a book. Let's read the verse. Jude chapter 1, verse 14. It says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So here we have a record of a prophecy that Enoch gave. But it doesn't say anything at all about Enoch writing a book. See, we know that Enoch was a prophet. And therefore his prophecies would have been passed down orally from generation to generation. That's how Jude knew what Enoch said. But Jude did not say that Enoch wrote a book. He said that Enoch prophesied. So people have to stop saying that the Bible talks about the book of Enoch because it doesn't. Now, the Bible does mention other books that we no longer have. For example, the book of the wars of Yahweh and the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, and others as well. 
But notice, the Bible calls them books. There is no mention in the Bible of a book of Enoch. Again, all it says is that Enoch prophesied. So now that we got that out the way, let's go into this book and look at some of the many, many problems inside of it. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 6, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. Now, before we read on, I want to establish what time frame this is in the Bible, because that's going to be very important later on. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. So, this is the same thing we read in the book of Enoch, chapter 6. So the book of Enoch, chapter 6, verse 1, is the same time frame as Genesis, chapter 6, verse 1. That's very important. Now, let's go back to the book of Enoch. This is chapter 6, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. Verse 2. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. So these angels look down from heaven, and they see these beautiful women on the earth, and they start to lust after them. Verse 3, And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. So supposedly, this angel named Semjaza, who was the leader, was scared that the other angels wasn't going to go through with the plan to leave heaven and come down to earth to sleep with the women. Watch this, verse 4. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Verse 5. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. So, this group of angels supposedly all swore on an oath to go through with this plan. Let's see how many angels agreed to this. Verse 6, it says, And they were in all 200 on the summit of Mount Hermon, and they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. Now, a lot of y'all believe this story. A lot of y'all really think that this actually happened. Remember earlier when I made a point of establishing what time frame this was in the Bible. Here's why that was important. According to the book of Enoch, this group of angels didn't leave heaven and come down to earth until Genesis chapter 6 when they begin to lust after the women. This point alone is going to show you that the book of Enoch is phony. Let's go to chapter 8 in the same book. Watch this. It says, And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates. Watch this. And made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them. Stop. Now we know that one of the angels who came down was called Azazel. Again, this supposedly happened after Genesis 6 when the angel saw the women of earth. It says that Azazel made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working with metal. That's a problem. Watch this. Let's go to the Bible. Genesis chapter 4, verse 19. It says, And Lamech took unto him two wives, 
The name of the one was Adah, and the name of the other, Zillah. Verse 20, And Adah bare Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Verse 21, And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. Now, notice this is Genesis chapter 4 here. This is two chapters before Azazel and the other angels supposedly came down to earth. Watch this. Verse 22, it says, And Zillah, she also bare Tubal-Cain, watch this, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was not Amma. Now, what is an artificer? Let's look it up in the Blue Letter Bible. Here it is. It's H2794. It's the Hebrew word karash. And it says, a metal craftsman. That is a problem for the book of Enoch. Look at Genesis 4 and 22. It says, Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. Tubal Cain was a metal craftsman and an instructor of other metal craftsmen before Azazel supposedly came down to earth. So how did this angel Azazel introduce men to metal and how to work with it when Tubal Cain was already a master metal craftsman before Azazel and his angel buddies decided to leave heaven? You see that? That's one example of the book of Enoch going off. Now, some of you might try to connect Tubal Cain to Azazel in a desperate attempt to hold on to your book. But Tubal Cain was born before Azazel supposedly came to earth. So that's not going to work. Let's keep a scorecard. The Bible 1, the book of Enoch, 0. Let's move on, because it's a lot more. Let's go back to the book of Enoch. So supposedly, after all this happened on the earth, right, the angels Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel tell the Most High what happened down on earth. Watch this. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 10, verse 1. It says, Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, verse 2, Go to Noah and tell him in my name, hide thyself and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed. And a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth and will destroy all that is on it. So the Most High sends the angel Uriel to warn Noah about the flood that's coming. Verse 3, it says, And now instruct him, that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. Verse 4, and again, the Lord said to Raphael, watch this, bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness. So the Most High tells the angel Raphael to bind the wicked angel Azazel and cast him into darkness. It says, and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudeo, and cast him therein. Now, I could deal with that ridiculousness, but I'm just going to get to the point. Let's jump down to verse 8. Now, this is supposed to be the Most High talking to the angel Raphael. It says, And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. Watch this. It says, to him ascribe all sin. So the Most High just told the angel Raphael that the whole earth was corrupted because of the wicked angel Azazel. And then he said that Azazel was responsible for all sin. That is another major problem for the book of Enoch. Why? Remember, this all happened during Genesis chapter 6. So how can all sin be blamed on Azazel 
when the Bible teaches that all sin is the result of what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve. The situation in the garden took place back in Genesis chapter 3. But according to the book of Enoch, Azazel and his angel buddies wasn't even down here yet. This is a horrible mistake. Let's go to the Bible, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Not because of Azazel, it says by one man. Who is that man? It's Adam. Watch this. It says, and death by sin. Here it is. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So according to the Bible, sin is the result of what happened in the garden. Eve sinned when she disobeyed the Most High. Then Adam followed behind her. And the result was that sin passed on to all men. This happened three chapters before Azazel supposedly came down to earth. So how is Azazel responsible for all sin? He's not. The book of Enoch is phony. It's not real. Before I keep going, let me explain why the book of Enoch was written in the first place. See, the Bible doesn't go into details about everything that happened, but people want to know everything that happened. So the book of Enoch was written in an attempt to fill in the blanks of the Bible. However, the Bible was written through the spirit of the Most High, but the book of Enoch wasn't. So it fails horribly at what it's trying to do. Now, it might sound good to those who don't diligently seek it out, but when you put it to the test, it fails miserably. Again, people accept the book of Enoch because they want to know what the Most High didn't tell us. But that type of curiosity can cause you to develop itching ears. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4 and 3. Here it is. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. See, a lot of people are not satisfied with the truth of the Bible. They want more information. It says, but after their own lust, a desire to know more than what the Most High revealed, it says, shall they heap to themselves teachers, watch this, having itching ears. See, a lot of Israelites have itching ears. They want to hear about the other stuff that the Bible didn't say. So they find themselves a teacher that will tickle their ears with the book of Enoch and other books out there too that's way off. Then when someone shows them that a lot of those books are off based on what the Bible says, what do they do? Verse four, it says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Watch this. And shall be turned unto fables. And that's why a lot of people love the book of Enoch because it's full of fables and people love fairy tales, but they don't want the simple truth. See, they want to be entertained. Let me show you something. The book of Enoch talks about this wicked angel Azazel that supposedly caused all these problems. But Azazel is not even a real angel. The Bible tells us who Azazel is. Watch this. This is Leviticus chapter 16, verse 6. It says, And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. Verse 7. And he shall take the two goats and present them before Yahweh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 8, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for Yahweh and the other lot for the scapegoat. So Aaron had to cast lots upon two goats. One goat was going to be used as an offering to the Most High and the other goat was going to be the scapegoat. Let's look up this word scapegoat in the Blue Letter Bible. 
Here it is. It's H5799. And look at what it says. Azazel. You see that? So Azazel is a goat. Now, what was the point of this goat? Let's go back to Leviticus chapter 16 and pick it up at verse 9. It says, And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which Yahweh's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Watch this, verse 10. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, Azazel, it says, shall be presented alive before Yahweh to make an atonement with him. Watch this. And to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So the goat Azazel was sent out into the wilderness. Watch this. Let's go down to verse 21. It says, And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat, Azazel, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Verse 22, And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. So this goat Azazel was used symbolically to carry away the sins of Israel into the wilderness. There's your Azazel right there. This has nothing to do with an angel. Azazel is a goat. The Bible 2, the book of Enoch, 0. Let's go back to the book of Enoch. Remember, this group of angels supposedly came down on earth and slept with these women. Let's see what happened to the women that had sex with these fallen angels, according to the book of Enoch. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 19, verse 2. It says, And the women also of the angels who went astray, watch this, shall become sirens. See, this is just crazy. According to the book of Enoch, the women who supposedly slept with the angels were turned into sirens. Let's see what a siren is. This is dictionary.com. The word is siren. It says, classical mythology. Notice it says mythology, meaning it's not real. It's a myth. It says, one of several sea nymphs, part woman and part bird who lure mariners to destruction by their seductive singing. Really? This is what the book of Enoch teaches? Let's go to Wikipedia. This is Wikipedia. This is Siren. It says, in Greek mythology, there it is again, it says, the sirens were beautiful yet dangerous creatures who lured nearby sellers with their enchanting music and voices to shipwreck on the rocky coast of their island. Let's click on this image so we can see how a siren looks. This is your book of Enoch right here. This is what you believe in. Let's look at some more images. This is what happened to the women that slept with angels according to the book of Enoch. You see this? If you believe this is true, then I don't even know what I could say to you. Listen, don't let nobody convince you into believing this madness. This is fairy tale Sunday morning cartoon make believe. There are no half bird, half women creatures out in the ocean somewhere singing songs. That's ridiculous. When you do the research, you find out that sirens eventually became mermaids. Now, do you really believe this? Because this is what the book of Enoch says happened. This is ridiculous. The Bible 3, the book of Enoch, 0. All right, there's more. Let's go to the book of Enoch, chapter 21, verse 1. Now, at this point, Enoch had a vision. And in the vision, 
he was taken to some type of place like another realm. It wasn't heaven. It was somewhere else. Watch this. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 21, verse 1. It says, And I proceeded to where things were chaotic, and I saw there something horrible. Watch this. I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth, but a place chaotic and horrible. So I just wanted you to see what type of place Enoch was supposedly in. Now, let's see what he saw in this place. Let's go to chapter 22, verse 5. Now, this is Enoch talking. It says, I saw the spirits of the children of men who were dead, and their voice went forth to heaven and made suit. So, Enoch is in this mysterious place, and he sees the spirits of men that had died, and their voices were crying out to heaven. Watch this, verse 6. Then I asked Raphael the angel who was with me, and I said unto him, This spirit, who is it, whose voice goeth forth and maketh suit? So Enoch focuses on this one particular spirit, and he asked the angel Raphael who it was. Watch this, verse 7. It says, And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he makes his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Now, this is another problem for the book of Enoch. First of all, Enoch is in this mysterious place and he sees all the spirits of men who had died. And then on top of that, he specifically sees Abel's spirit. That's a lie. Watch this. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3 and 20 in the Bible. Here it is. It says, All go unto one place. All are of dust and all turn to dust again. So here we see the Bible saying that everyone's physical body goes back to the earth or the dust when we die. Now, let's see where the spirit goes when we die. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Again, that's the body. Watch this. And the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. So according to the Bible, when anybody dies, their spirit returns back to the Most High in heaven. So how did Enoch see the spirits of people that died in Abel's spirit in some mysterious chaotic realm? He didn't see that. The book of Enoch is phony. See, the Bible doesn't make mistakes like this, but a book that is not written through the spirit of the Most High does. The Bible for the book of Enoch, zero. Let's go back to the book of Enoch. This is chapter 55. This is during the time of Noah. Chapter 55, verse 1. And in those days, Noah saw the earth that it had sunk down and its destruction was nigh. So Noah sees all the wickedness happening on the earth and he knew that destruction was coming because of it. Watch this, verse 2. And he arose from thence and went to the ends of the earth. Watch this. And cried aloud to his grandfather Enoch. Now, where was Enoch during this time? According to the Bible, Enoch lived 365 years and then the Most High took him from the earth. So by this time, Enoch is already gone from the earth. So now we got Noah crying out to heaven for Enoch to come down from heaven and to talk to him. This is amazing. Watch this. It says, And Noah said three times with an embittered voice, Hear me, hear me, hear me. Let's see what happened. Verse 3. And I said unto him, Tell me what it is that is falling out on the earth, that the earth is in such evil plight and shaken. Lest perchance I shall perish with it. 
So Noah wanted Enoch to come tell him what he could do so that he didn't die in the destruction that was coming. Now, just in case y'all don't know, the book of Enoch has Noah going way off right now. Noah's trying to talk to somebody who already left the earth. But maybe he was just afraid of the destruction, so he got beside himself for a second. Let's see. Verse 4. And thereupon there was a great commotion on the earth, and a voice was heard from heaven, and I fell on my face. Now watch this. Verse 5. It says, And Enoch my grandfather came and stood by me. Unbelievable. So Enoch came down from heaven to talk to Noah? Really? It says, And said unto me, Why hast thou cried unto me with a bitter cry and weeping? So Enoch comes down from heaven and has a conversation with Noah before the flood. Please tell me that y'all don't really believe this is true. Now, somebody might say it doesn't say Enoch came from heaven. But according to the Bible, Enoch only lived for 365 years and then the Most High took him. Let's read it. This is Genesis 5 and 23. It says, And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Verse 24. And Enoch walked with the Most High, watch this, and he was not. For the Most High took him. So it clearly says that all the days of Enoch was 365 years. That was his lifespan. And after that, he was taken from the earth. So the only way that Enoch could have came to talk to Noah is if he came down from heaven. Now that is a major, major problem for the book of Enoch. Watch this. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 13 in the Bible. It says, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. So now we see that somebody did come down from heaven. Was it Enoch? Let's see. It says, Even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So this is talking about Yahweh Shai. Not Enoch. Now, what does it mean no man have ascended up to heaven? We know that the spirit of man returns to the most high when a person dies because we read that earlier. But no flesh and blood goes up to heaven. Watch. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God the most high. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. In other words, no man in a human body can go into heaven. So Enoch could not have went to heaven with his natural body. So the only way that Enoch could have went to heaven and came back down from heaven is if he had a spiritual glorified body. Now, if that's the case, we have a major problem. Because if Enoch received a spiritual glorified body thousands of years before Yahweh Shai did, then the whole Bible is wrong. Let's go up to verse 20. Watch this. It says, But now is Yahweh Shai risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Now, we know other people rose from the dead, even in the Old Testament times, but they always died again. Yahawashai was the first person to completely defeat death because he rose from the dead with a glorified body. He didn't die again. He's the first of his kind, the first fruits, meaning he rose with a glorified body. Now, let's go down to verse 22. It says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Yahweh Shai shall all be made alive. So all of Israel that overcomes is going to receive a glorified body also. But when? Verse 23, it says, 
but every man in his own order. Watch this. Yahweh shy the first fruits. He got his glorified body first. It says, afterward, they that are Yahweh shies at his coming. So, Yahweh shy already has his glorified body because he overcame sin. But the rest of Israel doesn't get their glorified body until Yahweh Shai comes back. So if you say that Enoch had a glorified body during the Old Testament times, you're going way off according to the Bible. But if you say he didn't have a glorified body, then how was he going back and forth between heaven and earth with a regular body? It's impossible. You see, this is how you know that the book of Enoch is phony. Because when you examine it closely, you see that it's faulty all the way through. It's not from the Most High. Because the Bible doesn't make mistakes like this. The Bible 5, the book of Enoch, 0. All right, now, I want to stay in the same time frame before the flood came. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 in the Bible. It says, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Watch this. Verse 14. This is the Most High talking to Noah. It says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Verse 15. And this is the fashion which thou shall make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Verse 16. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Now you hear me emphasizing the thou here, right? Because we clearly see that the Most High told Noah to build this ark. And we know according to the Bible that Noah built it. But let's see what the book of Enoch says. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 67, verse 1. It says, and in those days, the word of God came unto me, and he said unto me, Noah, thy lot has come up before me, a lot without blame, and a lot of love and uprightness. So the Most High recognized that Noah was righteous. Watch this. Verse 2, it says, And now the angels are making a wooden building. Huh? Watch this. It says, And when they have completed that task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it. So the book of Enoch says that the angels built the ark, and then the Most High preserved it for Noah and his family to go inside before the flood came. That is not what the Bible says. We just read in the Bible that Noah built the ark. Let's keep reading. It says, and there shall come forth from it the seed of life, meaning Noah and his family will come out of it after the flood was over. It says, And a change shall set in so that the earth will not remain without inhabitant. So we clearly see that the book of Enoch teaches that the angels built the ark, not Noah. That's a direct contradiction to the scriptures. The Bible 6, the book of Enoch, 0. Now, not only does the book of Enoch contradict the Bible, it also contradicts itself. For example, the majority of the whole book of Enoch is about the angels coming down to earth and teaching mankind different kinds of sin. In fact, we read in chapter 10, verse 8, where it says that the angel Azazel was responsible for all sin. But when you go to chapter 98, verse 4, in this same book, it says this. I have sworn unto you, ye sinners, as a mountain has not become a slave, 
and a heel does not become the handmaid of a woman. Watch this. Even so sin has not been sent upon the earth, but man of himself has created it. And under a great curse shall they fall who commit it. What? This is a complete contradiction to the rest of the book. The majority of the book says that angels introduce man to sin. Now all of a sudden out the blue, man created sin by himself. You see, this is crazy. And it gets even worse. When you go to chapter 69, it gives you a list of some of the fallen angels, right? Watch this. This is chapter 69, verse 6. It says, And the third was named Gadrael. He it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death. Watch this. And he led astray Eve and showed the weapons of death to the sons of men, the shield and the coat of mail and the sword for battle and all the weapons of death to the children of men. Now, wait a second. I thought it said man created sin by himself. So why is this angel Gabriel in the garden tricking Eve? Also, how did Gabriel lead Eve astray when according to the book of Enoch, the fallen angels wasn't even on the earth during the time of Adam and Eve? You see, this book is all messed up when you closely examine it. It's not real. Who is the real blame for sin? Is it this angel, Gabriel? Is it Azazel who made the other angels swear to sleep with the women of earth? Or is it man himself who created sin? Which one is right? Because the book of Enoch says it's all three of them. That is what's called confusion. And the Most High is not the author of confusion. Again, how in the world can this book be legit when it doesn't even agree with itself? It can't be legit because the Bible doesn't make mistakes like that. I have to keep making that point. The Bible 7, the book of Enoch, Zero. Now, I want to go back to the time when the angels supposedly came down and slept with the women of earth because that is totally untrue. Let me say that again. That is totally untrue. The Bible doesn't say that angels slept with women. The Bible says the sons of God slept with women. Those sons of God were men from the line of Seth. You can find the title Sons of God in reference to men multiple times in the Bible. The only real support that people have for that angel sex doctrine is this book of Enoch. Every time I tell people that the Bible doesn't say that angels have sex with women, they always say, you got to read the book of Enoch, ah. Uh. So today, we're going to expose that lie with the book of Enoch. Let's go to the book of Enoch, chapter 69. This chapter gives you a list of the names of the so-called fallen angels and some of the things that they were supposedly responsible for. Verse 4, it says, The name of the first, Jequon, that is, the one who led astray all the sons of God, and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. So here we see that this angel, Jequon, is the one who supposedly led astray the other angels to sleep with the women of earth. That's funny though, because we read earlier in chapter 6, verse 3 of this book that it was the angel Semjaza who led the angels to sleep with women. Let me show you again to refresh your memory. Here it is, chapter 6, verse 3, it says, And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. Notice that Semjaza is the leader. Watch this, verse 4. And they all answered him. They all answered Semjaza. It says, And said, let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. So we clearly see 
that chapter 6 says that Semjaza was the leader who led the other angels astray to sleep with women. But back here in chapter 69, verse 4, it says, The name of the first, Jaquon, that is, the one who led astray all the sons of God and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. So again, this book is ridiculous. However, let's get to the point about this angel sex lie. That's what I want to focus on. This is verse 5, it says, And the second was named Absael. He imparted to the holy sons of God evil counsel and led them astray. Now watch this. So that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. Why is this important? Because most Book of Enoch supporters tell you that the fallen angels inhabited the bodies of men on earth and that's how they got women pregnant. Now they say that because they know that angels don't have sperm. So they say that the angels went into the bodies of the men on earth. However, verse 5 here says that the angels defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. So the book of Enoch teaches that the angels use their own bodies to have sex with women. And by doing so, they defiled their own bodies. So here's the question. How did these angels get these women pregnant without sperm? Angels don't have sperm. Angels are spirits. And even when they take human form, that doesn't mean that they can produce sperm. Angels only take the shape of a human. They don't become human. They don't grow a heart, kidneys, a liver, and a spleen. They don't produce sperm. Those are human attributes, not angelic attributes. Angels are spirits. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 39. It says, All flesh is not the same flesh. Watch this. It says, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So the flesh of a man is not the same as the flesh of an animal. Now look at this closely. Verse 40, it says, There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. A celestial body is a spiritual body. That's what an angel has. A terrestrial body is an earthly body. That's what humans have. Watch this. It says, But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. In other words, these are two different types of bodies. They do not mix together. An angel can't get a human pregnant because they don't have sperm. And that is not the purpose of angels. It says, The glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. You see, the Bible says that the woman is the glory of man. So men and women have sex. But the glory of the angels is to serve the Most High. They're not concerned with sex. They are ministering spirits that do the Most High's work. Now, let me show you another reason why this angel sex doctrine doesn't make any sense at all. Supposedly, the women on earth got pregnant by these angels. Let's read about the babies that were born as a result. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 7, verse 2. It says, And they became pregnant. So the women got pregnant, right? It says, And they bear great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. So these women supposedly had babies who grew to be 3,000 L's tall. Do y'all know how tall 3,000 L's is? 3,000 L's is 450 feet tall. Let me show you how tall that is. This is the Louisiana State Capitol building. This building 
is 450 feet tall. This is the height that the book of Enoch says that the babies of the angels grew to be. Do you see these people right here in front of the building? Now look at how high this building is compared to those people. Do you really believe that women had babies that grew to be this tall? Seriously. Come on, Israel. I know my people are smarter than this, especially when you can actually see it with your own eyes. This is the claim that the book of Enoch is making. Now, I'm going to go one step further and show you this using an actual man scaled to size. This man is 450 feet tall. I scaled him to size using my computer. Now, let me put a six foot tall man next to him. Here it is. This is on scale. Based on the height of this man at 450 feet tall, this man right here is six feet tall. Do you really think that normal sized people produce giants this big? Really think about it. This is serious because this is crazy. In the Bible, Goliath was considered a giant. He was nine feet, six inches tall. This is how Goliath would look next to this 450 feet tall giant. You see that? It's not even close. And again, Goliath is a giant in the Bible. Listen, don't fall for this 450 feet tall giant lie. Pun intended, because it's a giant lie. It's a fairy tale. It's not real. Let me take the building away. Look at the height discrepancy between this 450 foot tall man and this normal size six foot man. You can't possibly believe that's true. Now, some people are making the claim that archaeologists have found the bones of these giants. I hear this all the time. They found the bones, brother. No, they didn't. They have never found any bones of any giant that was 450 feet tall. There's not even any fake pictures of bones that big. You know why? Because they don't exist. That's ridiculous. It's a lie. Listen, even the pictures that you find online of giant skeletons, which are nowhere near 450 feet tall, even those pictures are fake. All you have to do is do the research and you will find out that those pictures were all created by people. Some of those pictures were created for Photoshop contests, which I'm going to show you, and others were created as a joke. All these pictures were proven to be fake a long time ago, but people don't actually research anything. They just say stuff. Look at this. This picture right here shows an archaeologist unearthing a giant skeleton. Now, many people reference this same picture right here as proof of the angels having sex with women and producing giant babies. Well, first of all, if this picture was real, this giant wouldn't be anywhere close to 450 feet tall. But more importantly, this picture is completely fake. Watch this. This is an article from subpages.com. The heading says, Photos of Giants, a hoax. It says, On a final note, I have also come across a whole lot of photos used by Christians to prove that there were giants in the Bible. Watch this. It says, I must warn you that if you are using any photos or videos of these to prove your theories of giants, then you will discredit your claim. This guy is telling you, don't try to use these internet pictures as evidence. It says, Moreover, you will also have many evolutionists ridiculing the Christians. Now, watch this. It says, These photos are a hoax. Most of these photos are from genuine excavation sites that have been altered by using sophisticated computer programs 
to place what seemed to be gigantic skeletons within the excavations. In other words, these pictures are photoshopped. See, it's not a secret. Watch this. It says, these were then entered in a photo contest and have been circulating in the internet for a few years. Then it gives you a link to a website that tells you all about the photo manipulation contest that these images came from and how different media outlets put the images out without verifying the authenticity of the photos. And as a result, the images spread all across the web like wildfire. Look at this. This is the National Geographic website. They did an article about these same pictures that came from these photo contests. Let me zoom in. It says, Skeleton of Giant is Internet Photo Hoax. The article says, The National Geographic Society has not discovered ancient giant humans, despite rampant reports and pictures. Meaning, even though people keep producing pictures of ancient giant skeletons and claiming that the National Geographic Society is responsible for them, it's not true. It says, The hoax began with a doctored photo and later found a receptive online audience, thanks perhaps to the image's unintended religious connotations. Meaning, the creator of these images was not trying to prove that ancient giants existed. He created the pictures for a photo manipulation contest. It says, A digitally altered photograph created in 2002 shows a reclining giant surrounded by a wooden platform with a shovel-wielding archaeologist thrown in for scale. So this image was created in Photoshop in 2002. Now, down here it says, by 2004, the discovery was being blogged and emailed all over the world. Giant skeleton unearthed, and it's been enjoying a revival in 2007. It says, the photo fakery might be obvious to most people, especially if you use Photoshop or other editing software like myself. It says, but the tall tail refuses to lie down even five years later. In other words, people just won't stop perpetuating this giant skeleton lie, even though it's been proven to be fake. Now, this is not the only fake giant skeleton image. There were many photo contests and there were many images used. Let's look at some of the other ones. Now, the story behind this giant skeleton was that it was found in India in the 1930s. It is now known that this image is fake. It was created in Photoshop. Let's look at another one. This giant skeleton was supposedly found in Saudi Arabia. This is another known fake image. It was created in Photoshop. Again, none of these images were made in an attempt to prove ancient giants existed. These images were made for a photo contest, and some of them were made as jokes. This is known information. Look at this one. This giant skeleton was supposedly found in Nevada. This is another known fake image. Here's another one. Now, this one was real popular when it first came out because these two giant skeletons were supposedly found in Egypt. But guess what? This picture is a known fake. It was proven a long time ago, but people are still talking about it today. Just check for yourself and you'll see that this image is a known fake. Here's another one. This giant skull was supposedly found in the India desert. Guess what? It's another known fake. It was entered into a Photoshop contest by a company called Worth 1000. Now, all these pictures were in the giant skeleton category. Let me show you some of the other images from these photo contests so that you can have a better understanding of what's going on. Now, these pictures come from the nature section. Look at this. 
This is a picture of a rock in the shape of praying hands. This image was made in Photoshop. And if you notice, it won first prize. Look at this one. This person turned a mountain into an alligator. Look at this one. This person turned a rock into a big fish. Here's another one. This person turned a waterfall into a face. Again, all these images were created with Photoshop for photo contests. So when you see these giant skeleton images all over the internet, at least do the research to see if they're real. Don't take them at face value because you're being deceived. Let's go back to this image. See, with all due respect to my Israelite family, and I mean this because I know some of y'all are sincere, but nobody who was thinking clearly would believe that 450 feet tall giants was walking around on earth. Look at this picture again. Look at the size of the normal man. Now look at the height of this building. Look at the people in front of the building. Look at the size of the cars. Don't fall for this type of lie. The Bible ate the book of Enoch zero. Now, there's two Bible passages that people get confused by because of this angel sex doctrine. The first one is Amos chapter 2, verse 9. Let's read it. It says, Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, here it is, whose height was like the height of the cedars. And he was strong as the oaks, yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Now here we see the height of the Amorites being compared to cedar trees. However, Og was the king of the Amorites and his bed was nine cubits high. So Og wasn't any taller than 12 feet. Therefore, we know that the cedar tree reference is just a figure of speech. The second passage is Numbers 13 and 33. Let's read it. It says, And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. This is also a figure of speech. It's the same thing as a basketball team with average height people on it. They walk into a gym and they see these seven feet tall guys and they say, man, we're like ants compared to them. They're not really the size of ants. It's just a figure of speech. Listen, I have a whole video based on this one scripture. It's called Numbers 13 and 33, The Mystery of the Giants. In that video, I explain this verse in detail. I also have a video series called Angels did not have sex. Who are the sons of God? In that video series, I explain who the sons of God are in Genesis chapter 6. It's not talking about angels. Angels never had sex. I also have a video series called The Fallen Angel Doctrine is a Lie. The title speaks for itself. I have another video called 450 Feet Tall Giants in the Bible. Yeah, right. That video shows the ridiculousness of the ideal of 450 feet tall giants living on earth with normal sized people. I also have a video called The Origins of the Giants After the Flood. In that video, I explain that the giants that existed after the flood were regular men, just like the giants before the flood were regular men. Now, it's funny because I actually had some people tell me that King Og survived Noah's flood by holding on to the bottom of the ark. See, this is the kind of stuff you have to believe in in order to make these doctrines work. That's crazy. That's one of the most ridiculous beliefs I've ever heard since I've been in this truth. And by the way, that lie about Og surviving the flood, that comes from an old Jewish midrash. The Bible says that nothing survived the flood except for Noah and his family. Now, my point for mentioning all those videos I made 
was because any scripture that's dealing with angels or anything like that, that somebody will try to use to prove the book of Enoch, I've dealt with those verses in one of those videos. The only piece that was missing was a video about the book of Enoch. So through the grace of the Most High, I covered that now. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. Now here's the thing about the book of Enoch. It has some passages in it that are similar to the Bible. So when people sparingly read it, because most people haven't read the whole book, they only read passages. And in those particular passages, they see things that are similar to the Bible. However, all the writer did was take certain biblical principles and put them in the book in order to give it some credibility. But that doesn't mean that the book is from the Most High. Yes, there is some good information in the book of Enoch because it's just copying the scriptures. But there's a lot of bad information in that book also. And I didn't even cover all of it. I just picked a few things. Look at this. This is James chapter 3, verse 11. It says, Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? No, because a fountain like that would be unreliable because you don't know what you're going to get. Watch this. Let's see what Yahweh Shai said in Revelation 3, verse 16. It says, So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, it has to be one or the other. It can't be a mixture of truth and lies and still be considered holy. It's either a righteous book or it's not. And the fact that there are multiple mistakes, that proves that the book of Enoch is not righteous. It's phony. Let's end on this last passage. This is Titus chapter 1 verse 13. It says, This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Here it is, verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. And that is what the book of Enoch is. It's a Jewish fable. It's a make-believe book that has turned many from the truth. Listen, I left so many examples out of this video because it's just too much to cover and I don't want this video to be eight days long. The bottom line is this. The book of Enoch is phony and I hope that you Israelites can see it. So in conclusion, even if there was a real book of Enoch at some point, which there wasn't, but even if there was, the versions that exist today are not real. They have multiple problems inside from front to back. Again, I only pointed out a few. So I hope somebody got some understanding from this video. And with that, I say Shalom.